Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at extending the standard libraries types with the use of Rust's trait syntax, or not syntax, but uh, trait functionality. And a really good example of this is the colored crate. Uh, colored provides a, uh, a trait, colorize, and when that is imported into the scope of your program, you suddenly have uh, uh, the ability to change or print your text out into different colors or on uh, different backgrounds and uh, add bold or even things like strike through. And it's quite crafty how this is actually done. So the first thing I want to do is just validate that this works. And then we're going to dig into the source code of colored to see how uh, that is implemented so that you can actually go and implement it yourself if you would like to extend the standard libraries types and provide something that feels a little bit like monkey patching uh, in a dynamic language. So I've just got a terminal window here and I'll create my new project. Uh, let's call it Spark and uh, go into it. I can cargo run, I get a hello world and I just add the Q flag there, I just get the output. Uh, it's, it's white text, so not particularly interesting. I can go into the dependencies and bring in the colored crate, uh, version two, and uh, then I'll go and try to call blue. Now this is going to fail for a couple of reasons. Um, the one, so we're first trying to uh, compile things and now we're getting some, some strange errors. Uh, it turns out that the print line macro itself doesn't uh, expect you to provide a, uh, uh, like doesn't expect you to call anything on there. It really wants a string literal to be in the first place. Uh, but the uh, thing that we're interested in is this error down the bottom that says that the blue method is not in scope. So uh, how do we fix this? I will start actually by creating a, I'll just simplify things a little bit by creating a text a variable and then Make sure that I am using the display formatting and so what, this is kind of what I, this is close to where I want to be. Uh, this will also refuse to compile. Uh, so we, there's no method on stir. This is the, uh, this is removing all those compile errors that are related to the print line macro and really get to the point that we are trying to focus on. And as soon as I bring in use col oh sorry, colored colorize, suddenly Rust will understand what blue means. And as long as I uh, oh there we go, and we get some blue text, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, and now let's take a look at the actual source code to see how they've done this because it's kind of cool. Okay, so the first thing to note is that, so let, if we want to look into a crate, we can go to docs.rs, find the source code by just clicking on source. You should always feel very comfortable and kind of digging into the source code. Uh, it turns out, although we, so we, we start with this, we find the colorized trait. Uh, so we actually we'll go back and then uh, go to traits colorize and then look for the source there. We can go directly to where we want to be and we see all of our methods and you can see they return this thing which is a colored string. Uh, and what is a colored string? Well a colored string is we've got some input string which is the original text a foreground color, a background color, and some style. Now, um, the style might be strike through or bold, for example. And the 
interesting thing comes later. So I've got a whole bunch of methods around styling and custom colors and so forth. Um, lots and lots of color variations. That's all fun and good. And blinking <laughs> as well as you can dim. Um, surely you'd be able to have like marquee or something, you know, flashing as well. Um, ah, there is blink. Yeah, so that's what it... The one that I'm really interested in is all the way down the bottom. And how is it the case that colored string kind of gets to masquerade as a string or like as a, a string slice? Well, one of the things that it does is it derefs uh, to a string because it can actually reference the original input. Um, but uh, we, it implements, it is the only thing that uh, needs to implement colored string, oh, sorry, the colorized macro. Uh, and down the bottom, we implement display for colored string, which if we go back to the source code of my program, you can see that uh, when I use the uh, the placeholder syntax with the curly braces, that's what I'm invoking. I'm invoking the display method. And that is where all of the sort of magic happens for being able to use all of the uh, NC escape, uh, uh, escape codes. And there is... One thing that I'm hunting for, which is a so we can convert a string slice. What I'm looking for is how it actually implements. Uh, there we are. Your what I was hunting for was the ability to implement your trait on some foreign type, such as types from the standard library. You can see here that colorize is implemented for string slices, and that includes string literals. And it does this by implementing them such that uh, colorize will can return a colored string from the input. And the, uh, and that is, is, is kind of how the magic works. It sort of has this internal type colored string and it has done all of the work uh, in the implementation of its colorized uh, the trait method to make it very, very easy for callers. And if you try to ask for a string again or a string slice, it can just it can use that deref functionality. So in, in a sense, that intermediary type this colored string becomes invisible. Um, so yeah, to reiterate, or just to kind of wrap up, uh, we have uh, some really flexible functionality available to you in Rust. Uh, you don't need to feel constrained by its type, by its uh, static type system. You're able to define a trait and then implement it for some other type. What you're not allowed to do is in your code, implement uh, colorize for some other part of the standard library. It's impossible to implement the uh, a foreign trait to, for a foreign type. This is known as the orphan rule, um, but if you want to write your own library, you can actually imbue uh, or sort of bless other types with that functionality if you would like. I hope this has been a fun journey into Rust or some of the, the kind of deeper functionality available to you. And uh, I hope that you will have a really lovely day. Okay, take care. Goodbye.